So while stationed out here, we got our COVID vaccines, and dang, if that second dose doesn't knock you out for like eight hours, and you just spring right back up, like nothing happens. I mean, it seems fitting, because in trying to finish the last pages of the stand here, one of the main characters is also in a manic fever dream state that they're trying to work their way out of. What I'm trying to say is, I felt seen in this book. So I finished the last book of Stephen King's The Stand, and again, all the same novel, just separated into three books. Continuing straight on from the second book, uh, there's more focus now on the villain's point of view, and more so the antagonists and the main characters. I wouldn't go so far as to call them villains, except for the main baddie of the story. One of King's strongest aspects is his characters, and leave it to him to make this intimidating, overpowering tyrant of a monster named Randall. He appeared a couple times in person throughout the novel, here or there, but he was always present in the book. In the woods, hiding out among the crows and the wolves, stalking you, appearing in the window for only a second, and looking down at you while you sleep and in your dreams. He's taken all your worst qualities and convinces you to indulge in them, but if you cross him, you'll end up crucified in the Mojave Desert. King is known for his horror, and The Stand is much more of a fantasy or thriller, but Randall Flagg's presence here is King's horror meeting in this book. In 1,200 pages of build-up to this confrontation of good and evil, and like many reviews made about The Stand over the years and King's writing in general, many did not like the ending. While I agree for some of other King's books, sometimes he doesn't really stick that landing. Um, this one I disagree with. I'm gonna go into spoiler territory, but I'm gonna be as vague as I can be, so The Stand has an ending that is both big, epic, and explosive. At the same exact time, it's unfulfilling and anticlimactic, and it's based around the action of a character basically going, I'm sorry, let me make it up to you, and then just makes it so much worse. When I first read The Stand, I hated this ending and the 50 some odd pages of extra stuff put on at the end until i read how king wanted to make a lord of the rings for a contemporary america i thought back to return of the king again vague spoilers uh, return of the king also has a big explosive ending at the very same time unfulfilling and kind of anticlimactic based around the action of a character effectively slipping on a banana peel on accident to save the day when I first read Return of the King, I also hated that ending, to the point that I had a hard time reading the 50-some-odd pages of extra story put on at the end of the book. I don't think King wrote the ending to the stand how it ended, because that's what Tolkien did, because they aren't one-to-one, -one, but there are structural similarities to them, and at the very least made for a fun reread. King was a Methodist, Tolkien was a Catholic, and you can see those ideologies at work. Rings has a large theme of retribution, forgiveness, and penance for your actions, while The Stand has themes of biblical destiny, trust, loyalty, and faith in some kind of divine plan. Most of my issues with this book I mentioned in the last two videos. Uh, they aren't as prominent in the last part. The Stand has some of King's best writing, but there are still some hang-ups to bring it down, but I think the good outweighs the bad overall. That it's not my favorite King book, but it's definitely one of his most ambitious, and I think one of his best. I'm going to take a break from King for a minute, and perfect timing, because my deployment is almost done, and like the characters in The Stand, I'm getting real homesick. So until then, everyone, wash your hands. Wear a face mask, continue to social distance best you can, and take care.